Aloha friends, this is Jonathan. Welcome back to my channel. Today, ooh, I actually thought I got a birthday, early birthday present, but no. This is actually a Kickstarter that I backed a little while ago. Um, gorgeous card. Uh, lovely handwritten note. And... Um, yeah, this is the lovely poem. Poem. Oh, I love this purple ribbon. Should save it for something. Oh, it could be a good tie for a bag. Oh, this is almost like opening a birthday present. This is very nicely wrapped. Impeccable paper. Oh, oh. Let's see here. Beautiful. Oh, there is a course that goes with the deck, but that's gorgeous. Huh? This might be fun to sign up for. Wrapping job, guys. Amazing. Dashani Shuku. The lovely Om Taro. Divine guidance for personal and spiritual growth. The lovely Om Taro features gods and goddesses from the Hindu pantheon and mystical beings from many dimensions. It describes the spiritual journey from a psychic perspective. It ties in the chakras and includes the concepts of reincarnation, karma, and the subtle bodies. It is a perfect companion for your, your yoga practice, emotional healing, and spiritual growth. Oh, even with the lovely sticker here. I love this kind of like metallic purple sides. I almost don't want to damage the sticker. Oh, I wonder, can I just, no, I'm gonna have to peel it. Wait. I should have had a little sharp knife here, then I could just slice it open. And you know what? No, it's too late. Oh, well. Maybe. Just the right size. There we go. Salvaged. Gorgeous box. The lovely Om Taro. The yogi sees himself in the heart of all beings, and all beings in his heart. Sri Krishna Bhagavata Gita. I love that it comes in its own gorgeous embroidered bag. Let's look at the book real quick. I look at the book. First, let's see. It is 208 pages. Recommended readings. I love that. About the author and artist. Darshani Shuku is an intuitive psychic with over 25 years of experience. 
She guides her students with love and insight to a higher understanding of themselves and helps them to gain clarity on their spiritual path. She teaches seminars on healing past life trauma, developing your intuition, and connecting to your soul. Very cool. Watercolor artist. So, let's start with acknowledgments. My dearest nanny. The lovely Own Tarot. Nice. So, kind of like a little intro to Tarot. The lovely Om Tarot was created in a space of prayer and meditation. It features loving gods and goddesses and mystical beings from many dimensions. It includes helpful concepts from the yogic tradition such as karma, reincarnation, chakras, and subtle bodies. It's a very cool little deck. Okay, got the major. Oh, and I have chakras connected to specific suits very cool so the major soul vishuddha and ajna chakras discs is earth malahardra chakra cups water swadhisthana chakra wands fire manapura chakra swords air anahata chakra Oh, and apparently the court cards are influenced by the Thoth deck. So it's Queen, Knight, Prince, and Princess. Uh, I think of them as a family. The Queen is the mother of the suit, the Knight is the father, and the Prince and Princess are the children. They learn about the energies of that suit and will eventually continue the line in this format, there is a movement and exploration of the energies through relationship. So we got Queen, Knight, Prince, Princess. Because apparently the thought system aligns with Hindu gods. Hmm. Where Shakti, feminine aspect, is the foundation. Okay. So the Queen is the highest card. Which, you know, not surprising. Lots oh, of gorgeous image of the chakras. Huh. Gorgeous imagery. Talks about gods. Symbol Om. Then we have a few spreads. More about oh. Oh, I love this. The major arcana connected with the chakra system. That's cool. That's very cool. So, oh, and then we have, there's a lot in this little book. And then finally we have the cards. We have a smaller full color image. Um, morning sun. Oh, and they talk about the symbolism in the card. That's very cool. And then we get story time. And then when you get this card, Keywords, symbolism, write up when you get this card. Cool. Okay. And that's. Oh, wait. So I just see. Oh, do the miners have bigger write ups? They do. Oh. I see. Each of the minor suits has its own spread. packed into this little book. I'm color me impressed. Okay, now we get to the meat of it. Sorry if I've been taking too long. I just was enthralled by that book. There's so much in it. 
Oh, oh, I love this cardstock. Okay. Uh, you know what? There's been no plastic. I mean, the sticker is plastic, but I saved that. There's the paper. Um, oh, I wish I had a right this size deck next to me. This is a little wider than most, I mean, it's almost uh, halfway between Tarot and Oracle size. I love that ohm right in the middle there. Okay. First thing to know this is, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> let me have a sip of water. I was going to say, it's, this is definitely its own deck, isn't it? Some of it might be based off uh, Thoth, Toth, Toth, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I don't know. I definitely, with the gods and goddesses connected, this is gorgeous cardstock. It just, it, it's smooth and it just feels buttery in the hands. I don't know. So, the fool. The magician. I love how the suits are there and the coin is acting as the table for the other three. Which, you know, manifesting in the world. That's just so brilliant. <laughs> Gorgeous high priestess. Wow. Empress. Oh, that's a very cool Emperor card. Having the vision. Mm -hmm. The hero vent. I got my hero vent right here. <laughs> That's gorgeous. The lovers. I love how the chakras are in there and all the colors of the chakra too. Side best angle for viewing the cards for you guys, but I angle it a few ways just to make sure you see it well. I love this cherry because I actually feel the sense of movement crossing that bridge. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we have Justice as 8, for those of you who don't like that. <laughs> the Herm, I love this Hermit card. That's just amazing. That, wow. It's an amazing wheel of fortune. It's like the cosmic wheels turns. <laughs> oh, here we get a goddess. I know this guy's in my brain is having a hiccup. Let me see. Goddess Durga, I thought so. Okay. Divine Mother that destroys the darkness. Mmm, marigold flowers, uh, sacred. Manapura Chakra, Shakti, or Divine Energy. Shall we have a little reading time with Jonathan? Let's just read this one card and I'll get back to the, the regular show. <laughs> Strength, 
Shakti, divine energy, power, courage. Goddess Durga, divine mother that destroys the darkness. Lion, strength, courage, power. Many arms and weapons, many powers and abilities. Marigold flower, Manapura chakra, Shakti, and or divine energy. Our potential is hidden like a diamond within a dull stone. It must first go through intense pressure and heat, then be cut and polished before it can finally take in light and become a gem. The Divine Mother knows your potential and offers her blessings towards your awakening. Our strength and potential lies dormant within us. The Divine Mother places obstacles and difficulties in front of us to rouse our inner fire. She wants to ignite our Shakti, the inborn power, our spiritual force that can overcome all hardships. Strength is not something we are born with, but something we gain through facing our challenges. We need situations that force us to invoke the courage and strength within us. The mother bird pushes her little chicks out of the nest before they know how to fly. It is her way of teaching. The ability to fly is already within the baby birds. They just need life to bring it out. In the same way we are put into situations in life that when we pull ourselves together we find our strength and courage. The mother Durga is fearless as she rides into battle on her powerful lion. She is ready and equipped to vanquish darkness, ignorance, and evil. You can draw strength from this divine form of God. Have her give you the strength and courage to become powerful in this world. Pray for her protection. When you get this card, invoke the power within you to face your challenges. Do not be defeated. Pray to Mother Durga for strength, courage, and fierceness to win your battle. So, this is such a cool deck. <laughs> Here we have the Hanged Man. Death. That's a gorgeous death. Temperance. I love how Darshani has brought in all these different Hindu gods. The devil. the tower and yet it still has like if you don't know about those gods but you do know rws or thoth or any kind of tarot really you can read with this for sure oh my god i love this moon card and that octopus gorgeous The sun. And the Aeon. Instead of oh, it's Shiva. And here we have the world. Oh, that's gorgeous. We start with discs, and I guess we start at the top and work our way down. Hmm. Beautiful. Hmm. Looks like Krishna. Oh, huh. Oh. Looks like Pan. Oh, I'm curious. Let's see. Krishna. Prince of Discs. I 
don't see a specific like, like I thought pan immediately, but maybe it's just a satyr. Okay. Princess of Disc. Ah, it's gorgeous. Oh, beautiful. Three of discs. Oh, wow. Six of discs. Seven of discs. Oh, that's cool. See? Oh, that's crazy. That's like playing with my perception. Is that a model that he's working on, or is he thinking of the land that he's planning? Oh, that's like. That's cool. Nine of discs. She looks kind of bored. <laughs> I guess contentment can be boring. <laughs> Ten of discs. Oh wow, I love this Queen of Cups. Wow, wow, wow. I don't know if you can see, but her pupil is night sky and her iris is the ocean. I mean, See little bits of scaling under her eye. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. Knight of Cups. Prince of Cups. Just realize it keeps focusing on the face there. So I'm gonna turn that over so it focuses more on the cards. I'm sorry if the last few ones were out of focus. I won't be able to check till I'm done. So. Oh, Ace of Cups, I love that. I think I kind of like this deck a little since I keep saying, I love that, ooh, ah, wow, ooh, I love that. <laughs> uh, oh. That Rama and Sita. Let me see. Sorry, my <laughs> interest was peak. Yep, yeah. Rana Krishna, okay. It's been a while since I studied my Ayurvedic kind of stuff. Sorry, Hindu mythology. You know, I was a kid. <laughs> Three of Cups. Four of Cups. Oh, that's a very sad five of cups, isn't it? Mm. Oh, that's gorgeous.
seven. Eight of cups. Leaving the swamp. <laughs> It's a gorgeous nine of cups. Oh wow. It's a river, but it's also a sleeping goddess. Oh, there's so many layers to these cards. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Ten of cups. Queen of Wands. Gorgeous. Oh, here we go. I keep forgetting to put that upside down. Sorry. Knight of Wands. Oh, that's cool. Prince of Wands. Well, this princess of wands is making some magic. Oh, the cobra. Uh -huh. Oh, that's gorgeous. Ace of wands. That's very thothish, isn't it? Totish. Toth. Thoth? Whichever way you choose to pronounce the word. see RWS and a lot of it, but then there's like elements of Toth that pop out. Ah, it's gorgeous. Love this Three of Wands. Four of Wands. Five of Wands. Uh, and they're actually, looks like a Mage Jewel, doesn't it? <laughs> Six of Wands. Uh, huh. Made it through the mud and the muck all the way up to Bloom. I don't know if you can see, but there's actually a little figure right in the middle of the flower. So yeah, the very RWS Seven of Wands. Hanuman. Oh, I love that you have a yoga series here. Gorgeous. Oh, any yo anyone who's ever done yoga should recognize that series. <laughs> Nine of Wands, a volcano. That's very interesting. Very explosive. Ten, ten of Wands, interesting. Again, we get that like weird distortion of perception, like because there's wands here, but then you see a guy walking away on the road. So, I don't know if you can even see that guy. There's the wands, and the guy's walking away into. It's like halfway between a forest and a city. That's interesting. Definitely have to sit down with the book for this deck. Queen of Swords, the literal Ice Queen. Knight of Swords. I love this Prince of Swords. Oh, Ice Princess. <laughs> 
so device oh, that's a very interesting two of swords isn't it do you go through into the wild or you stay in your yard I assume that's his yard <laughs> oh I just noticed that, like, the way the branches are, there's, like, skull right there. Interesting. Three of swords. A feeling of drowning. Well, that's a very restful four of swords, isn't it? And the swords. Huh. Like, the more I look, the more little things I see. That's what I love about a deck, is when the art kind of, like, pulls you in, and you keep seeing, like, different layers. Whoa. Look at that five of swords. That looks ouchy. But it almost looks like he's doing a ritual too. Huh. Six of swords. Hmm. Interesting. Some of them I'm definitely going to have to read the book to really understand the image better. But the uh, artwork is just gorgeous. Huh, looks like he's throwing the swords into the river or the ocean. Eight of swords. She's tied to the eighth one, of course. But I don't think she's not blindfolded. She is tied to the sword, though. Ooh, nine of swords. Don't get sucked down that hole. The pit of despair and worry. Kind of weird to finish with the Ten of Swords, huh? And look at this image. Uh -huh. There's a sword in every organ. But she's still smiling and carrying on. Stiff up a lip and all that. Very interesting deck. Very, very, very. So I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way. I'm going to practice some shuffling, seeing how it shuffles. Oh, that is a nice shuffle. Gotta say, really nice shuffle. Even good shufflers sometimes fold it. Not close enough. That was the problem. Well, sometimes that happens when you're shuffling. If you get a little like hesitant and you, you're not quite close enough, then like the edges hit instead of. If you're just learning to riffle shuffle, I do have a video on that, and uh, yeah, it's, it's not an easy thing to master, but once you do, uh, I just, I don't know. For me, I love shuffling. Riffle shuffling is my favorite. I love the sound. I love how quick it is. 
And it's really one of the best, best ways of really shuffling with that. Oh, they a crazy good wash. They spread it out everywhere, but I don't think anyone has time for that today. This video is already long enough. <laughs> Let's just do it. I'm going to do a quick little deck interview now. I know the video is already way too long. That's okay. I'm sure half of you clipped out. But I'm curious. Curious, I say. Uh-huh. Of course, the High Priestess is underneath. So, the spread I'm using here, let me pull it up on my phone to show you real quick. Let's go to albums, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. So, I use this spread for interviewing my deck. So, um,. First card is tell me about yourself. I got the Ten of Swords, so this deck does not hold back, right? It, it'll give you everything, right? That's its personality. Let me just stab you. <laughs> uh, what are your strengths as a deck? We got four of discs, and look at this. We have like this spiral with the four seasons and the the four phases of the moon that you usually see connected and. So that's the strengths of the deck. Mm, very balanced, very centered, very stable. Interesting. What are your limits as a deck? And we got two of wands, right? So I don't think this deck is very good for decision making, is what I would say. With this full spiral and the ten of swords, this is like, let's get deep right into the bone marrow. And then four here is, what are you here to teach me? And we got ten of discs. That's a gorgeous card to get for that. It's like, teach me love. <laughs> so, uh, number five, how can I best learn and collaborate with you? The Hermit. So apparently this deck uh, I will not be using for public consumption. I will probably, with this as the best way I can learn and collaborate with the deck makes me feel like it, it it's for me and me alone and for working on deep, deep crap. Oh look, and then what is the potential outcome of a relationship? Five of wands, five of wands, right? You know, you might get a little pissy with each other and might not like what the deck has to say, but I think if you look at the bottom card, I, you know, it's not part of the spread, but I always look at the bottom card, we get the High Priestess, which is my soul card, so it's very interesting. I think that, yes, even though we might get into conflicts, butt heads occasionally, and it's not really good for decision making, this deck is going to be, you know, deep. Right. Help me uncover my mysteries. Not necessarily the mysteries of others, but my own mysteries. So, wow. Okay. I think that is the only time I'll probably ever use this deck with others being able to see. <laughs> I don't know. I might, for close family or for certain people, I might be willing to use this deck with them, but that that reading just made me feel like this deck is more about like deep soul dives. So thank you so much for sticking through to the end. This is an amazing deck. I love it.
the the lovely home. Thank you so much. Okay, tongue tied. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell, ding a ling a ling, so that you'll get notified when I do these kind of videos and when I go live for my interviews. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, aloha and hui ho.